Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking a look at the recent G.I. Joe Classified Series Flint figure. Um, he is marked as number 26. I do have the box in the background upside down, but I liked it this way better. I'm really excited for this figure. I'm really happy to get this figure. Um, as far as the leaders of G.I. Joe go from the original cartoon, Flint was my favorite of the three. Um, the three being Duke, himself, and Hawk. Now, he was always the second in command to Duke and then third command under Hawk, but he was really, you know, the primary focus of season two. He's the guy in the opening pointing his finger, yelling, Yell Joe, Yo Joe, even though it was Michael Bell's voice instead of uh, Brett Ratner's voice. But I'm cool with this. This is a cool figure. Now, Flint is a warrant officer. I still have no idea what the hell that is in G.I. Joe. And as I said in the original cartoon, he was the third in command. I don't really know the hierarchy in the comic books at all, but still, real excited. The box has this beautiful artwork. Let's go ahead and read this real fast. Showing off just how gorgeous that artwork is. And of course, it has the same background that was there for Lady J, where you do get that beautiful painted image of all the characters just kind of standing there doing nothing. As far as the figure goes, it is a standard Hasbro figure. So it's going to be just like every single red figure, red figure, Star Wars black figure, a Ghostbusters plasma, etc. You know what to expect as far as articulation goes. And unlike you know a lot of the Hasbro, other Hasbro figures, he doesn't have anything backing or blocking rather things. So he does able to get his leg up about that far. He is able to kick it back a little bit. He can do the splits painfully. Knee is on a double bend, elbow double bend. You can do a full 360, pull it out, head, can move around, and let's go ahead. And speaking of the head here, let's take a look at the head sculpt. I do think they made him just slightly a little bit too pretty looking, but it is a good looking figure. The hat here does come off, and I'm really impressed by that. Instead of it, you know, taking it off and putting it on like you do with Lady J, it's just a soft piece of plastic. He does have that nice fade cut going on. Uh, he does come, the costume, the outfit is really, really good, good looking. It's very well sculpted, the shin guards, the knee guards, and of course the bullets for his shotgun. He does get weapon storage here. He does get a holster here, and then he gets his backpack for his shotgun, which I really, really dig. And I'm very, like I said, this is a really cool figure for us older collectors, especially for those of us who grew up watching G.I. Joe. But, it is what it is. It's a standard Hasbro figure at this point, where as far as articulation and posability goes. However, unlike, let's say, Loki, or even Wenwu, who wasn't that bad, but compared to a lot of the other recent Marvel Hasbro figures, Katie's pretty bad. He can stand up. Look, I can actually bang around. And he doesn't fall over. But yeah, as then, you know, you know what to expect at this point if you collect any of these figures from Hasbro. But he can allegedly hold his shotgun. I say allegedly because I can never get the weapons in on these things. Oh, yeah. And it just looks badass, right? But, yeah, that's it. These are all sweet reviews whenever I do these seven figures. There's not much to talk about, and all my G.I. Joes are put away in storage right now, so I can't really show you comparison to his original figure. To do that, just go to yojo.com. I'm no way affiliated with them, but they're probably the best site for that. So again, thank you for watching. Please comment down below. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. Hit subscribe, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.